Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. I'm here at CES 2014 at the MakerBot booth with Bree Pettis. It's good to see you, Bree. Will, it's great to see you here every year. Um, so you guys announced a ton of stuff the other day. I figured we should just run down the list and yeah, yeah. kind of kind of hit the high points, maybe hit the low points, and you know, as always, <laughs> tell people you know you can get a little deep and dirty here. Okay. So um, the first guy is the MakerBot Mini, uh, MakerBot Replicator Mini. All these machines have the same MakerBot Replicator 3D printing platform inside. So okay. same electronics, same software behind them. There's no compromises here. So this is a, a, a tidy machine. It's actually about the same size as the original Cupcake, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got the same build volume. You've got a, you can make stuff this about four by four by five inches, and there's no leveling required here. It just works. Oh, beautiful! So and the platform just pops right off, right? Yeah, so it just pops right off. So when you're done, you, you're all good to go. And how hard is it to get? These are all PLA printers now, right? These are all PLA printers, yeah. And so release is a little bit easier, maybe than it has been with the ABS stuff. Release is release is easier, and then check this out. This is the MakerBot Replicator uh, Smart Extruder. So just you saw it just snaps. Wow! In. It just snaps in and out. And it's got a little electronics board in here, some sensors. It knows when you run out of filament and pauses, sends you a message and says, "Can you please feed me?" Okay, so that's another thing that's changed this year. All these are all connected devices. So oh yeah, so they're all networked. So this one is uh, connects wirelessly and over USB. Mm -hmm. The other bigger ones also have Ethernet and uh, and a USB stick you can plug into it. So connected devices. This. It's got a camera on it, so you can go get a cup of tea and monitor your 3D printing, your 3D print. It's like my 1993 coffee pot. <laughs> so, so um, what else? What else does the connected add to the printer? It, can you print over? Can you like log into a website, use an app to print something like that? So we dropped three new apps: the desktop app, a mobile app, and a, and a creative platform, the MakerBot Print Shop. And so you're going to be able to log in on the desktop or on your mobile application see what, how much progress, see how much time is left. People have really been asking for that. Like, That was a feature that people, but we didn't have room on the old electronics to actually right. do that. And now you can know how much longer there is until it's done. So does that mean that I can, I, I can even work from outside the same subnet? Yes. That's wonderful. <laughs> or you can, you, know, you can start at the office, go home and check it as, you know, Check it from home. That's really exciting. I noticed you also enclosed this, which is a uh, new for MakerBots. For us, this is mostly because we wanted this to be really accessible and friendly for teachers and students, and so this just keeps uh, keeps little fingers out. Okay. And, well, and keeping the breezes out. Your air conditioner tips on. You don't want the the print to go sideways. Yeah. This. You know, we've actually found that PLA is dimensionally stable enough to handle it open, but we wanted to make this just a really. Uh, just tidy package that would be friendly in schools. Keep tiny fingers away from the 220 degrees Celsius <laughs> end. Uh, how much is the replicator mini and when's it going to be available? This is 1375 and we're shipping in spring. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Okay, moving down the line. So this is the replicator. Yep. Now I have a replicator at home, but mine doesn't look exactly like this. So you know, we didn't make the MakerBot Replicator 3. We just decided to call it just the MakerBot Replicator. And this is the desktop edition. This is the you know 2014 edition, however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to just basically standardize it. This is the kind of rock solid standard prosumer machine. Okay. And if you're an engineer, industrial designer, architect, this is what you want on your desk. You need this for work. This is the one you get. The, you absolutely need this for work. Work. Serious work. <laughs> like printing a pair of uh, red pumps. Yeah, I mean, we in, in kind of classic form, these these are actually real high heels. They're very uncomfortable. I'm sure. <laughs> as every bit as comfortable as every pair of high heels ever, right? Um, but got a bigger platform, got an 8 by 10 inch platform here, 6 inches in the Z. That's a, that's a little bit more room to make bigger things, and we've got a glass build plate for just ultra smooth. It sticks really well. Well, and there's no w dangers of warping and stuff like that with the glass plate too. On the on the issue of leveling as a MakerBot operator, you know, one of the one of the things that requires some patience on our older machines was leveling the build plate. And um, we we simplified that process. There's only two knobs now. Okay. And the way it works is there's a sensor in the in the extruder. So when it goes over, you literally turn the knob until the light goes on on the extruder and it's level. Now, as somebody who spent a fair amount of t the last three, four years leveling MakerBots, that is really exciting news. What, how does the sensor work? Uh, it's a Hall effect sensor, so it, no, it's okay. a distant sensor. It's it's and it's like absurdly accurate. It makes me so happy. We just, I just saved you like a hours and hours. Of, of Every hours couple of weeks, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what else is uh, what else has changed in the replica? I noticed you have uh, new electronics in this as well. Same electronics. This one has a luscious three and a half inch display. You've got this knob. Turn that knob. We modeled Feels that, pretty nice. We modeled that knob off after high-end stereo equipment. I was say, whose stereo did you bring in to figure <laughs> out how the knob works? 
Yeah, exactly. It just feels good to use it. And you know, on your your on your replicator, you have to, whenever you want to change out filament, you have to like turn the whole thing around. Well, now you want to change filament, you just pull it up, and you can change it out from the front. So you just pull it up, snap it off, and you're ready. Oh, and, and so the the uh, filament tube runs all the way through here and back to the top. There's plenty of room for travel. Um, you said it's six inches and a little bit bigger on the on the platform, right? Six, six inches vertical. Uh, eight by ten by six inches. Pretty good size. I don't think you'd put one of my shoes on there, but maybe. Well, we've got another machine for that. <laughs> um, how much is this one? Is it going to be available? Uh, this one you can order today. We're going to ship it in a few weeks, and it's twenty-eight ninety-nine. And are there plans for a souped-up two uh, two filament model of this in the future? Yeah, we're actually going to continue selling the MakerBot Replicator Two X for experimenters. Okay. If you've dealt with the the dual extruders, it's fussier. It's it's really for experimenters, mm -hmm. and so we're just going to keep selling that and keep. And, and really, we've come a long way with that, mm -hmm. both on the software and having multi-materials. But, but that's really for the experimenter. We're focusing on, on making 3D printers for everyone now. Okay. So moving down the line, this is the big boy. Yeah, I think this might, might be the most disruptive one we've dropped. This is epic. So you've got 12 by 12 by 12 inches in here, by 18 inches in the Z. You could print out buckets. You could print out helmets. You can print out huge pieces. You can artwork full-size Maltese Falcon. Just whatever you want, as big as you want, more no, or less. No compromise, full-on industrial strength 3D printer. So it looks like not a glass build platform in here, though. This is a really sweet build platform, and it's super flat. It's absurdly flat. And it just comes flat, and it just stays flat. It's, you know, the, 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 the precision equipment we've got in here we spared no expense. It's rock solid. So, and these are all uh, 0.1 millimeter vertical resolution machines, still, or you know the uh, the MakerBot Replicator Mini we have it just out of the box does uh, 0.2 millimeter, 200 microns, mm -hmm. because we just want it to be easy for people at that level. On the MakerBot Replicator and the MakerBot Replicator Z18, you can tune them down to 100 microns, okay. no problem. So, and and that's probably on the small one, more about print speed as much as anything. We wanted for the for the for the MakerBot Replicator Mini, we wanted it to be optimized for satisfaction. Okay. <laughs> so we want fast print speed, uh, and and 200 micron is is you make we I, we I, actually we print everything at 200 micron. So it's we're, always a good first pass to find out if there's anything wrong before you do the what the 100 micron one. Um, kind of a big deal here is the heated build chamber. As you make things, it keeps your model dimensionally stable, and that matters when you make giant things. As, as the layers stack up, a little tiny bit of warp goes a long way, right? Yeah, so this, this just keeps your models really nice and tight. How hot do you run the build chamber? Mm, I think it's something like 50 or 60 C, okay. so it's not super hot, it's not an oven. And do you need, I assume you don't need any kind of huge power supply or anything like this, it still runs off a normal 120 volt outlet? Yeah, you just plug it in at home and it just works. And you know, oh, and then watch this, this is great. Oh, that's nice. Are you? Well, let's do that again for the camera there. Are you doing new spools? Is this a new size spool? This is, a, it's actually the same size spool of material. It's just a different format, so it's a different form factor. Thinner and longer, okay. Um, can you run us through the electronics real quick? I'd be really interested to see what's what's changed on the on your front panel and all that kind of stuff too, if you're So what we've got like, here, and this is the same display as is on the MakerBot replicator. You've got the, uh, you've got an intuitive display, luscious color. When you're making stuff, it'll actually show you, a mo it'll, you can watch the preview from the camera, or and you can actually see all the statistics and all the stuff right from here. The amount of filament used, build time, how long it has to go, et cetera. Yeah, and there's all sorts of utilities, and we're gonna actually build some neat applications that will run on the machine. That's okay. gonna be fun. So what, what platform is the hardware inside the machine? Are you, are you talking about that? So we've got a, the, the electronics platform in there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a computer. It's a couple hundred megahertz processor. It's got a nice uh, real-time, a uh, bunch of real-time microcontrollers inside the processor that we get to use for all the, all the controls. And that means that we've got, basically, the machine is running on the, on the real-time microcontrollers inside the processor. So we've got just a full computer here to play with. So does that mean I can send an STL file over to the machine and it'll do the slicing for me? Or I'm still running MakerWare or an equivalent for that? Uh, it, it, uh, you, it, it slices in MakerWare or in the cloud, okay. and then it sends it, it, it sends the binary to the machine. Okay. Well, fantastic. Uh, this is now. This looks yeah. like it might be a little expensive. This one is sixty-four ninety-nine. Wow. 
Wow. Which is interesting. I was telling somebody, I was, I was telling Martha Stewart earlier, I said $64.99. She was like, $64,099? I, I'm operating a little bit of different scale than Martha Stewart, I think, Bree. So this is the one Martha Stewart's going to get. Um, this, is, this is one of those things where it's, when you look at the build volume and you compare other printers with a similar build pro platform, it's an absurdly, absurdly reasonable price. Mm -hmm. It really shouldn't be this affordable. We worked really hard. To, to make this, so it's, it's, it's this much. Are you still manufacturing in, in Brooklyn? Yeah, all three of these machines are manufactured in, 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 our, in our factory in Brooklyn. That's with Brooklyn Pride. That's fantastic. Um, just one more question. Any idea how much plastic is in the helmet? I'm, I'm kind of curious. It looks like, that looks like a, a pretty good half a spool, if I had to guess. Uh, go on, hold it. What do you think? I think, you're, I think you're basically right on on a half spool, maybe half to three quarter. About a half a kilo, right? Yeah. Okay, well, excellent. Thank you so much, Bree. Anything else? Um, I know you announced some new software and stuff like that. It's a little harder for us to show on camera, but. Sure. I mean, I think that's the, other, the, only, the the big thing is we did launch a bunch of software. The MakerBot desktop app is new. We've got a mobile app allowing you to be connected. And we've got a design tool that lets you make cool stuff like, like this really easily. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, the, um, it, we, we've really created a package. I mean, you'll see other people just have laundry lists of like announcements. We created an ecosystem so that when you get a MakerBot, you're taken care of. You, it's seamless, you enjoy it, it's fun, and it's, 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 we've really made it a lot more friendly and easy for folks. Excellent. No excuses. <laughs> no, all your excuses for not having a 3D printer are invalid. Get one. Just, just go out, shell out the cash, and you'll be 3D printing as soon as you open the box. Thank you so much, sir. It's always a pleasure. Great to have you here. Uh, and right we'll be back with more from CES 2014 at Tested. I'm Will. See you guys later. Bye.